Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Iron FX Viewpoint. I'm Marshall Gittler, head of Global FX Strategy here at Iron FX. I recently went through the performance of the G10 currencies in 2013 and talked about what the market expects for them in 2014. Now, I'd like to do the same exercise with all of the world's major currencies. Major is, of course, a relative term, but in any event, I took 32 countries, including the G10, but also many of the larger emerging market countries whose currencies trade fairly widely, at least among professionals. When you add the emerging market countries, the results become really interesting. Really interesting. Well, I thought they were. I tried to talk to my wife about them, and after a few minutes, she said something about having left something on the stove and left the room. So. It's possible that not everyone will think this is so interesting, but I hope you do. Anyway, here's what I found. This is a graph of the top 10 performing currencies and the bottom 10, looking just at the price performance against the dollar, the best and the worst among the world's major currencies. You can see that the Israeli shekel appreciated 7.5% against the dollar, more than any other major currency, while the Argentinian peso depreciated the most, falling 24.6% against the dollar. Actually, if we take all the world's currencies, the best performing one was, anyone know? The Somali shilling, which rose 44%. Why did that perform so well? The country started to recover from its civil war, business is picking up, and Somalis living abroad have been sending money home, which increases demand for the currency. At the same time, no new banknotes have been printed since 1990, so there's just a shortage of banknotes by now. On the other hand, the worst performing currency was the Iranian rial, down 50.2%, followed closely by the Syrian pound, down 49.9%. But those currencies aren't included in this study because, as I said, I want to concentrate on those that are traded at least among professionals. Anyway, there are a few things I'd like to point out about this graph. First off, Five of the top 10 best performing currencies last year, just from price appreciation, were developed market currencies. The Danish krone, the euro, the Swiss franc, sterling, and the Swedish krone. Of course, China was in there too. I think the reason so few emerging market currencies made it in last year was because of the tapering fears, which hit emerging market currencies hard. Secondly, on the other hand, two of the bottom 10 were also developed market currencies, the Australian dollar and the yen. The yen was down there with the Turkish lira and the South African rand, two of the so-called fragile five emerging market currencies. In other words, the yen was as weak as some of the weakest currencies in the emerging market world. This sounds really bad, but actually, it isn't so unusual. In 2012, the yen was the second worst performing currency on the list, just barely beaten by the Argentinian peso. Overall, it does appear that those countries with sound economies, and particularly those countries not dependent on flows of money from abroad did well last year, while those that need to finance deficits with capital flows are having problems. Israel, the best performer, had a current account surplus of around 2.3% of GDP last year. Now, that's the price appreciation against the dollar. Let's look at the second factor that goes into the total return from currencies, and that's the interest return on the currency. You can see that this varies a lot. The Indonesian rupiah, for example, paid 9.6% last year. That's a lot just to keep your money in the bank, even with inflation running around 7%. By comparison, interest rates on the Danish krone and Swiss franc were slightly negative. You actually had to pay the bank for the privilege of holding those currencies. It was only two basis points, which is why you can barely see the bars there on the graph, but they're there on re in red. Putting these two together, spot market return and interest return, gives us the total return from holding these currencies against the dollar. Here's a graph of that. What's interesting here is that one of the developed market currencies, the Swedish krona, drops out of the top 10. And two more developed market currencies, the Canadian dollar and the Norwegian krona, join the worst performing list. While, of course, two emerging market currencies, the Indian rupee and the Colombian peso, I'm sorry, the Chilean peso, drop out of the worst performing list. This demonstrates in part the value of interest return, particularly in a low interest rate world like today. Nonetheless, relatively high yielding currencies like the Indonesian rupiah, the Australian dollar, the Brazilian real, and the Turkish lira are still on the bottom of the worst performing list, 
which shows that interest doesn't always make up for a country's problems. The, that fact should give pause to people putting on carry trades. Carry trades are trades in which you sell the low-yielding currencies and invest the money in high-yielding currencies. There's a lot of research that shows that over the long term, weak currencies often pay higher interest rates than are necessary to compensate for the decline in their value. Now, this may be true over the long term, but sometimes even a year isn't long enough. Sometimes a, sometimes a year is long enough, though. Speaking of which, did you notice anything funny about these graphs? This was a test to see how observant you are. The test was that the last two graphs only had 19 currencies in them. I took out the Argentinian peso. Let me show you what they look like when I put the peso back in. The fact is, the peso offered such a tremendous interest rate, 59%, that if I had included it in the graph, it would have been hard to see the other bars. Now, if we take that 59% interest return and add it to the 25% loss on the spot value of the currency, we get this graph, which shows that actually the Argentinian peso was the best performing major currency on a total return basis in 2013. So, it was at the same time both the worst performing currency in the world and the best performing currency in the world. That's why I thought this was so interesting. Although, as I said, my wife didn't stick around long enough to hear about it. Thank you for listening to me, though. So, it turns out that buying the Argentinian peso was a great trade last year, if you had the courage to do it. And also, if you could do it, because I don't think it's easy for retail investors to invest in it. I think it was largely a professional trade. So what to do this year? Are there any equivalent trades this year that the market consensus suggests? I'll look at that question next time. So that's my view. Any questions, comments? Please feel free to message me at mgittler at infx.com or get in touch with your INFX representative. This is Marshall Gittler, head of Global FX Strategy at INFX, wishing you solid trading.